Praise the Lord, and once again, we welcome you to Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Sunday School Time. We are so blessed to have you, and this is yours truly, Pastor Smith, Greater Atlanta Healing Temple. We are located at 1332 Holcomb Avenue, right here in East Point, Georgia. Once again, God bless you for joining us, and we trust that you will be blessed through this session. At this time, we will begin with the word of prayer. Almighty God, in the precious name of Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word, your son dying on the cross to set us free from sin. We ask, oh God, today that you open our eyes, open our ears, Lord, that we may understand your word and apply it to our hearts. In your precious name, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen, and thank you. Again, once again, we thank God. Our lesson for today is a very familiar lesson we've heard as we were growing up. Jericho, the fall of Jericho. We used to sing a song as little children, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. Where today's lesson, we're going to see how those walls managed to come down and why they fell. Amen. And who was behind all of this? Our lesson comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verses 2 through 4, and then verses 12 through 20. That's the book of Joshua, and we're reading out of the sixth chapter. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king there, and the mighty men of valor. And you shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go around the city once. This thou shalt do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests bearing seven uh, trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went on continuously and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the re reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returning to the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, in any wise, keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed. When you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it, but all of the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron, and are consecrated 
unto the Lord. And they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet. And it came to pass that when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So here we see a very important event taking place as the children of Israel are realizing the promise that God gave way back to Moses and now to Moses, a successor, Joshua, who is now leading the children of Israel into Canaan land. And our lesson again is entitled, The Fall of Jericho. And as we see in my graphic uh, display, The Fall of Jericho. Now, Jericho was a well-known city. Jericho was a fortified city, which means it wasn't just a little town laying on the outskirts, and, but it was a fortified city. And when we say fortified, that means it had a big, strong wall around the city. And this is the way they did in ancient uh, time that this wall around the city was a means of protection from outside enemies. And it usually was a very thick wall and would have uh, openings at the top where soldiers could post themselves to stand guard and watch for approaching enemies. Hallelujah. But so what is happening is that now that God has given Joshua the go ahead, just as he was with Moses. And so in order to get into the promised land, they had to cross their first obstacle, which was the Jordan River. They had to cross over the Jordan River. God worked a miracle so that just like Moses went over the Red Sea on dry ground, God showing Joshua that I'm with you too, since now you are the leader of my people. Joshua was able to take the children of Israel across the Jordan River at a time when the water was real high because God wanted to prove himself. And they were able to go across the Jordan River on dry ground. And once they did that, they set up memorials. I believe uh, Joshua and the uh, priest, they took 12 stones and they set up a memorial to remember, for the people to remember that it was not just Joshua. It was not something we did on our own, but God was leading Joshua and God was with us just as he brought us out of Egypt and he brought us across the Jordan River. So now they have crossed the Jordan River and set up camp. And in today's lesson, God has spoken to Joshua to encourage him and to reassure him that now you cannot rest because you still have not gotten the promise that I promise you. And that is all this land, these cities are yours, but you've got to go in and take them. And so he told Joshua exactly how to do this and to get this accomplished. And he told him that you're going to get your army, your army men, and God is a God of order. He told them you're going to have your armed men leading in front. They are going to be followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven priests. And these seven priests had a special job of blowing the trumpet. And if you, as you can see, these are not the 
brass trumpets that we are familiar with today. Their trumpets were made of ram's horn. And if you have not heard a ram's horn blown, they create a loud sound. So the seven priests, each one of them had a ram's horn trumpet. And as they were marching in this line, they were to blow their trumpet. Now, following these seven priests that are, whose job is to blow the trumpet, are four more priests who have a very special job. And as you can see here, these four priests are carrying the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was very, very important because wherever Israel went, they were to carry this. And God had instructed they were to be uh, carried this in a certain fashion, a certain order. They had four priests, one on uh, two on each side, and they were to use posts to carry the Ark of the Covenant. Now, why was the Ark of the Covenant so important? The Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God, the presence of God. And behind the Ark of the Covenant was what we call the rear guard. So look how God has orchestrated this. You got the soldiers in front, followed by the seven priests with the seven trumpets. They are followed by the four priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And then the rest of the procession, the rear guard brings up the rear. So you got soldiers and the priests in front leading, and you have the Ark of the Covenant in the middle of the procession, reminding people that God is in the midst of his children. So they didn't have to worry because he was taking care of the front and he was taking care of the rest, the rear. And he was in the middle, his presence, letting them know that I am with you. So we got the seven priests with the ram's horn, the Ark of the Covenant, and the rear God. Now, we're talking about the fall of Jericho. Jericho was a walled city. Jericho was a great city. Now, historians and archaeologists this uh, say that the city of Jericho was a huge area, maybe on seven acres. So it was big enough for an army to march around in a day and have plenty of time left. So what Israel was supposed to do according to God's rule, according to God's uh, orders and the way Joshua was following God's order. Now notice, Joshua is doing what God has dictated to him to do. And as long as the preacher or as long as the man of God is obeying God, being led by God, then he can lead God's people. That is why it is so important for the man of God or the woman of God to be in touch with God all the time so that they can receive directions from God and the people benefit. So Joshua didn't wait till noonday. They didn't wait till 11 o'clock, uh, 1 o'clock. Whatever they were doing, they started early in the morning. So, according to the directions of God, this procession with the soldiers, the seven priests blowing their uh, trumpets, the Ark of the Covenant, and the soldiers in behind were to march all the way around the city of Jericho for six days. And they were to only march once each time of those six days. They were to march around Jericho once for six days. 
So for six days, they did one march around the city of Jericho because Jericho represented the enemy. Jericho was one of the nations that they was one of the first nations, in fact, after they crossed the Jordan River, that they had to defeat in order to be able to go far uh, into the Canaan land. So Jericho was the first major city that they had to encounter and defeat and take that city so that they could keep marching and take the other land. All right. So they were to march around quietly for six days. God did not tell them to shout, to make a lot of, a lot of noise. The only thing he told them, the priests had to blow their trumpets while they were marching. And this took place for six days. Then God told them, now, now you, after you've done that six days, I want you to march around one more time. March around Jericho seven times on the seventh day. So we see the number seven is an important number with God. He created uh, uh, the world. He created uh, everything in it. And he rested on the seventh day. So seven is a very important number with God. So now he tell them that I want you to march one more time around the city but on this time we're going to do it a little bit different we're going to change it up instead on the seventh day instead of marching around jericho only once and going back to camp i want you to march around jericho seven times marching around this city seven times then on the seventh day when you march around, after you have marched around seven times, the priests that are blowing the trumpets, they're going to blow their trumpets. And when you hear the priests blowing the trumpets on the seventh uh, day, after the seventh time they have marched around the city, then I want the people to do something. The people, I need you to open your mouths and shout with a loud shout and when you open your mouth and give that loud shout the walls of jericho are gonna come tumbling down now let us take note god did not Tell them that your army is going to defeat the army of Jericho and that's how you're going to win the city. God had the priests to lead the line to march in front because God wanted his people to know that this is going to be done spiritually and this is not a natural war. If your soldiers had went up and taken the city and defeated then your soldiers, you would be saying, look what we did. But God was going to get to glory, and he was going to get the glory his way. Today, we are going around our cities of Jerusalem. What are you talking about, preacher? We have to fight our cities of Jericho. I'm sorry, excuse me, of, of Jericho. We have to fight our battles. And notice what is taking place. God had promised Moses, and then he had turned around and promised Joshua, who succeeded Moses, that I'm going to give you Canaan land, which is on the other side of Jordan. But when you get there, you will see that there are already people living there but their ways are not my ways. You're going to see they're doing things that I did not say do. They're doing things that I say don't do. They're offering sacrifice to idol gods. They're sacrificing their children. They're not serving the true God. 
And what does that mean for us today? We are looking to go into a land, the promised land for us. Amen. Our kind of land is to spend eternity, to be caught up in the rapture and live forever with Jesus. But in order for that to happen for us, as we go through the land today, as we go through our daily lives, we must fight against sin. We must fight against the enemy. Our enemy is not people, but our enemy are the cultures of the land, the ways of the people. The people say that we can do things and it's all right. But God's word said, be holy. We are living in a land we are trying to possess and live in a land where homosexuality is okay. We are trying to take a land and, and go through a land where stealing is okay. We're committing adultery where people are doing whatever they want to do. And that's what was taking place in Jericho and in Canaan land. But God said, this is the land I'm going to give you, but you got to get rid of this stuff. You got to get rid of these people in their way. The same way as we go through this land today, we cannot adapt to the ways of the world. One of the problems I see with church people today, with God's people, we are assimilating ourselves into the culture of the land. We are dressing like them. We are talking like them. Our habits are like the world. We must be different from the world. And this is what God had told his people before they went into Canaan land. He had told them, you got to go in and you're going to possess the land. And when you go in, you're going to not allow your children to intermingle with their children because they will stop your children from following me. So here in our lesson today, we see that the children in verse 16, as they came to the path the seventh time that they marched around the city, after that seventh time, like God said, when the priests with the trumpets blew their horns, blew their trumpets. Then when the people, the Israelites, the Jews heard that trumpet, they shouted, they lifted up their voices and they shouted. And Joshua told them, you shout and you shout for joy. Why? Because even though this city had big strong walls, they had soldiers and armies, the Lord, the true God, has given you this city. And he said, now, God has given you this city. You're going to take this city. And he gave a special commandment to the soldiers. When you go in and you realize you have, you're defeating this city and the city belongs to you. And the people that live in Jericho now are in your hand. Before you started just killing everybody, I want you to remember somebody who worked on our half and helped God's people, and that was the harlot Rahab. You'll remember last Sunday's lesson when Joshua had sent two spies to spy out Jericho, and Rahab realized who they were, and she hid them because the king of Jericho wanted them dead. But Rahab hid them in her house and they promised her that when they come in to destroy the city, she and her family would be spared. Hallelujah. So all of her family would be spared because of the kindness that she showed to Joshua's two spies. So Joshua tells him, go in and take the city and all that you see in it, 
I don't want you to take anything out. I want you, they're the only thing I want you to take, and the only people we are going to spare is Rahab and all of her family. Now, they're going to be destroyed. The city is going to be destroyed. But he tells them, there are some things in that city that I want you to bring back because we're going to put it in the house, the treasury of the Lord's house. But he said, when you see all this good cloth, when you see all the good furniture, when you see all of this stuff that appeals to you, don't you touch it. The only thing I want you to bring back, to touch and bring out of Jerusalem when you destroy it is all of the silver, the gold, the vessels of iron. That's what you I want you to bring because that is of value and bring it and we're going to put it in the treasure of God's house. But everything else utterly destroyed. Now he told him, he warned him, say, because if you let your eyes get greedy and you see something that you think you want and you pick it up, you're going to cause Israel trouble because all of that that is not blessed of God is cursed. And if you bring something that God has cursed into the camp, then God is going to curse the whole camp. That tells us today we cannot partake of what the world is doing, their habits. We cannot partake of their drugs. We cannot partake of their alcohol. Amen. We cannot act like them because what they are doing has brought a curse on them. And if we do the same thing that the world around us is doing, that we are supposed to be uh, conquering them and not them conquering us, we are going to be in trouble and bring a problem on the people of God. Amen. So he told them, he said, and if any of you keep to yourself any accursed thing, let you make yourself accursed when you take up the accursed thing, and then you make is the camp of Israel a curse and you trouble it. That tells us we as people of God <coughs> cannot go out and try to bring the world into the church. We cannot bring the ways of the world into God's house. We are saved. We have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. We cannot bring the culture of the world into our families, into our lives, into our homes, because that brings a curse upon the people of God. And then we go to the house of God and we are trying to have an anointed service and we wonder why the presence of God is not with us. We cannot bring the accursed thing and sin is an accursed. We cannot bring sin into the camp. For God is holy. And he does not need anything that the world has to offer to make his service uh, go and be successful. God is God all by himself. And he said, but verse 19, he said, I don't care how many good chariots you find how uh, many good pieces of cloth you find. I don't want any. Don't bring, don't touch any, don't take any. But verse 19, he said, but all of the silver and the gold and all of the vessels of brass and iron, they are consecrated to the Lord. In other words, they're not for you to take home, not for you to say, oh, well, I need me a drink and I'm just going to uh, drink out of this. They are consecrated unto the Lord and they are going to be special. So that's the only thing that I want you to bring. And he said, and they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Amen. Bring it into the storehouse, into God's house for the treasury. 
And so he said, the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. Because up to this point, they are following the directions of God. And now, when they heard the trumpets blow, the people shouted. And there was a great number of people. Think about all the children, that big multitude that came up out of Egypt. Been estimated at least a million people. Can you imagine, sort of like the Million Man March in Washington, D.C., and all of those people opening their mouths at the same time and shouting out, yelling out, because God had given them Jerusalem. I mean, I'm sorry, not Jerusalem, given them Jericho, this major city that was their enemy, and they didn't have to fight. The soldiers didn't have to bring out their spears, but just by obeying God, God and following directions, God gave the city of Jericho over into the hands of the children of Israel. And the people shouted with a great shout. And when they shouted with a great shout, what happened? The walls of the city of Jericho fell down flat. Just by taking God at his word and being obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. All God asks you to do, just do what I said. And what did the children of Israel have to do? They didn't have to fight. The army didn't have to get up uh, their, all their soldiers and all of this. All they had to do Simply march around Jericho six days, one time a day, and then on the seventh day, march seven times. And when the ram's horn blew, amen, obey. And when they did, the walls of Jericho fell. Today, God is not asking us to do anything grievous. He's not asking us to pay a thousand dollars. He's simply asking us to simply obey his word. Joshua told the people what God told him to do. Today when the preacher, the pastor, tells the congregation what thus says the Lord, it is up to the congregation to be obedient and obey what God has told the leader, and then we will get results and defeat the enemy. So that is the story of Joshua, how he beat and he won the battle of Jericho. So God has been so good. And as they move forward into Canaan, and there we are going to find they're going to have different battles ahead of them. But God, as long as they obey God, God is with them. We want you to enjoy or join us next Sunday for our next lesson, Ehud Frees Israel. Ehud Frees Israel. And that lesson is found in the book of Judges, chapter 3. Verses 15 through 25, verses 29 and 30. Ehu frees Israel in the book of Judges. Join us again next Sunday. We have enjoyed talking with you and sharing the word of God. And our prayer is that God bless you and keep you encouraged. Again, and again, we invite you to come and be with us in worship the true and living God. Hallelujah. In spirit and in truth. Our church is located again. It's the Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Church. 1332 Holcomb Avenue, East Point, Georgia, 30344. God, we thank you for these that you have given us and given us 
us a heart to listen to your word. We ask a blessing this week that you keep our hearts encouraged. Draw us closer to you. Bless each and every family. Heal, deliver according to your mercies. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you. Heaven smile on you.